at Eden United Church in Mississauga, Ontario. My name is Allison, and I am one of the youth group leaders here at Eden. This is the worship service for Sunday, June 27th, and some of the Eden youth will be leading worship today. June 27th is recognized by the Canadian government as Canadian Multiculturalism Day. Eden United Church acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are settlers on Turtle Island, and in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we commit to respect, listen, learn, and support Indigenous peoples with whom we share this land and who have cared for this land since time immemorial. Hello, I'm Terry, and I'm one of the co-leaders of the youth group at Eden United Church. The United Church of Canada identifies multiculturalism as communities living alongside one another that value tolerance and celebrate expressions of culture. The United Church's intercultural vision, however, goes further. It encourages all of us to change build relationships, and did distribute power fairly in respectful awareness of each other's differences. We strive to become intercultural church to deepen our understanding and experience of, of God and one another. Part of the vision of the intercultural church is to create space where we can sustain our own cultural identities while also affirming those of one another. We hope this service begins to explore this dot idea of interculturalism. You are invited to follow along with the worship guide that has been emailed out and to say the bolded parts where they are. Once there was someone who did such amazing things and said such wonderful things that people began to follow him. As they did, they asked him who he was. One time he answered, I am the light. Even though we are unable to meet in person, we need to remember that this light continues to shine. Who are we in Canada? We are the first peoples who have walked these lands for thousands of years. Inuit, Mohawk, Cree, Haida, Mi'kmaq, and over 600 more peoples. We are French, Black, British, and Chinese peoples who have been here for a few hundred years. We are multitudes from all corners of God's world, Pakistan, Korea, Ghana, Chile, and Mississauga. Where are we in Canada? We are in the streets, in our neighborhoods, in workplaces, schools, and community centers, and in temples, mosques, and churches together. We are here at Eden United Church together. Why have we gathered here? We are here to celebrate and give thanks for our cultural differences. We are here to praise God for the gifts of intercultural relationship and the desire to live joyfully and equitably with one another. We are here to worship. Thanks be to God. God, creator of variety and difference, creator of hearts, minds, and bodies, 
You've called us into relationship with each other so we can know you more fully. Help us see you in our neighbors, in those who are familiar, and in those who are not yet fam familiar. Creative wholeness. Help us learn to do more than celebrate difference. Help us to be transformed by the gifts of diversity and become the blessed community. Amen.
If you know me well, you probably know that I love reading and I have a pretty large collection of books. I enjoy how the stories can transport you to another world and that authors can share their own experiences with their readers. Today we are celebrating all the cultures that exist in our community and exploring the idea of interculturalism. With that in mind, I thought I'd share some of my favorite books that tell stories of and celebrate the many cultures that exist in our community. This first book is called Sea Prayer and is written by Khaled Hosseini. It is beautifully illustrated and tells the story of a family who is forced to flee their home in Syria due to the war and to seek refuge in a country overseas. Next is a book called Viola Desmond Won't Be Budged by Jody Nisha Warner and Richard Runecki. This book tells the story of Canadian entrepreneur Viola Desmond who was arrested in Nova Scotia because she sat in the whites only section of a movie theater in 1946. She was charged and convicted of not paying the correct tax on the movie ticket and fined. Viola Desmond fought against racism in Canada. After her death, she was pardoned by the Canadian government in 2010 and in 2017 was featured as the first Canadian woman on the new $10 bill. Viola Desmond's story is an important part of our country's history. Malala Youssef is the youngest winner of the Nobel Peace Prize and is the author of this next book, Malala's Magic Pencil. In it, she dreams of a world where she can make significant changes using a magic pencil. She also spoke out in favor of girls' education in her native Pakistan and was attacked for it. She survived the attack and has continued to use her voice to advocate for girls' education and peace in the world. The next book is called Seven Sacred Teachings. It was composed by David Bouchard and Dr. Joseph Martin and translated into Ojibwe by Jason and Nancy Jones. The paintings were done by Christy Cameron and it shares the seven sacred teachings found in many First Nations traditions and even has a digital download for music by Swamp Fox. It is an interesting way to learn more about the beliefs and traditions of Indigenous peoples whose land we live and work on. Wab Kanu, an Indigenous man and current leader of the NDP party in Manitoba, wrote our next story called Go Show the World. This story is a celebration of Indigenous heroes and shares the stories and accomplishments of many Indigenous people. It is beautifully illustrated by Joe Morse. The Secret Path is a graphic novel by Gord Downey and Jeff Lemire that tells the story of Chenny Wenjack, an Ashinaabe boy who was stolen from his family and forced to attend the Cecilia Jeffries Indian Residential School. He died in 1966 when he ran away from the institution and tried to find his way home, which was more than 400 miles away. Learning about the residential schools in Canada is an important part of our history and a necessary step towards reconciliation with our Indigenous people. Proceeds from this book are donated to the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation. The next story is called One and is written by Catherine Otashi. It focuses on bullying, exclusion, and the importance of using your voice to stand up against injustice. In the story, the other colors are bullied by the color red until one comes along and stands up to the bully. The other colors learn that they too can count and learn that together they can make a difference. Red learns to count as well and changes their ways. It's a lovely story with a message of kindness. The final book I want to highlight for you today is called All Are Welcome Here by Alexandra Penfold and Suzanne Kaufman. It celebrates multiculturalism and the variety of different families present in our communities. It has vibrant illustrations and a great message. It even features a beautiful poster with a message that all are welcome here.
Which book is your favorite? Maybe you'd like to check out these books at your local library or bookshop and enjoy the stories while learning about justice issues and celebrating interculturalism at home. Happy reading, Eden, and God bless. Prayer for Illumination Living God and hopeful prayer, we ask that you open our spirits, our minds, and our hearts as we listen with all of our senses for your life-giving message in Scripture today. Amen. John verses 5 to 30 from the message. To get there, he had to, fly, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sychar, a Samaritan, a Samaritan village that bordered the field Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, Would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, How come you, a Jew, are talking, are talking to me, a, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, Sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from it? He, he and his sons and livestock who passed it down to us. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I, I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artisan, artisan spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, Sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty. We won't ever have, won't ever have to come back to this well again. He said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put, I have no husband. You've had five husbands and the man you're living with now is not, isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there, sure enough. Oh, so you're a pros prophet. Well, tell me this, our ancestors worship God at this mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, this time, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You, you worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming, in fact, has in fact come when what you're called Will, num will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It's who, you are, it's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is looking for. Those who are simply honest, honestly themselves before, before Him in their worship. God is sheer being itself. Spirit, those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves, in adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that. I, I do know that the Messiah is coming. When he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Just when his disciples came back, they were shocked. They couldn't believe he was talking with that kind of woman. No one said what they were all think, thinking, but their faces showed it. The woman took the hint, in her took the hint and left. In her confusion, she left her water pot. Back in the village, she told the people, "Come see a man who knew all the all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out." Do you think this could be the the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves.
Today's message is about the idea that there are many voices in this world, voices of the past, present, and future. Some of these voices have been silenced or ignored for a long time. It is the church's intercultural work that encourage us to build relationships so that every voice may be heard and valued for their own unique worth and redistribute the power fairly in a respectful awareness of each other's differences. This is the work that Jesus was doing each time he shared a meal or conversation with someone who is considered to be an outsider. This is at the heart of our scripture reading about the Samaritan woman. Listen carefully to the voices, the cries in the dark, their laments, the words that have been ignored for before now. Here are the voices from many places. Can you hear my voice? I am she who came to the well at midday. It was too hot to be hauling water at that time of day, but I did not dare go with the other woman at dawn when it was cooler. Their hostile stares and cold shoulders made it clear I was not welcome. I was unused to kindness, so I didn't know how to respond to him at first, but there was no judgment in him only compassion. And for the first time, I felt that someone else was really seeing me. It was scary and beautiful, and it changed my life forever. My, te my tears of alienation were transformed that day to tears of joy. Can you hear my voice? I am Zephora, Moses' wife, who was sent away with my sons to my father's house when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. Did he send us away to protect us, to keep us out of harm's way while he confronted the Pharaoh and then the army of Amalek? Or was it that he was embarrassed to acknowledge us in front of his people, since we're not Hebrews? Whatever his reason, it's always made me feel like I'm not one of them. You know what I mean? Sure, I'm part of the community now. But I always feel like a stranger among them. Like they've all gone through this incredible experience together and I just wasn't part of it. I'm respected as Moses' wife, but I just don't really feel accepted. My tears come silently when no one is there to see. Ani, Jennifer Dijnikaz, Mississauga Dinjaba, Anishinaabe Kwenendao. I am from Metagami First Nation on Treaty 9 territory, and I am Turtle Clan. My ancestors have been on Turtle Island since time immemorial. My great-great-grandfather came from Scotland and was a fur trader and ran a trading post for the Hudson's Bay Company. I am Ojukri, and I am a proud Anishinaabe woman and Christian. My faith is a mix of Christianity and Anishinaabe. My belief in God and Creator are very strong. It is challenging at times to reconcile the genocide that Christian faith leaders participated in for decades while running residential schools. However, I also believe that we need to honor that pain, grieve the children and the culture that was lost and find ways to live our lives in a way that honors those who were lost and live, still, share, and strengthen our culture today. One way that I express my spirituality is through music. I am a drummer, a Duwagan Quay. I drum to connect with Grandmother Moon, my ancestors who bring me guidance, and at the same time God in all her glory as I let her light shine through me. As a way to honor the 215 found not so long ago, I would like to drum and sing the Cherokee morning song. This song has two teachings. It is a song that may sing, that many may sing in the morning to welcome the day. Give thanks and acknowledge creator for all that is given to us. The other teaching is that this is a song for mourning, for loss and for working through that loss. My tears burn with anger at the way my people continue to be treated as outsiders in my own land. Miigwech. When they
Can you hear my voice? Are you sure? Because there are voices missing from the conversation. There are voices that have been silenced. There are voices that continue to be ignored. The voices of anyone different are struggling to be heard. Those of us with privilege must do more to listen to and help these voices be heard. My tears come from hope for the future, although there is much work to be done. Listening to the silenced, ceding to those without power, grieving the loss we did not care about, becoming flesh for those whose flesh is torn. We are called the body of Christ, broken for the love of the world, bloodied on behalf of the wounded, poured out to make others whole. We commit our way to the troubling peace of Christ. Amen. Although we are worshiping virtually, the cost of maintaining the church and its programs does not change. Thank you to all who donated through PAR or e-transfer or dropping your check at the locked box outside the church office. None of these options work for you. Perhaps you would like to mail a check to the church office. You will find the correct mailing address on the Eden United Church website. And now we join together to bless these gifts. God, you show us that we are worthy of your love by Jesus' reaching out to the Samaritan woman. We are like the Samaritan woman who calls out injustice against us. By pointing out the injustice, she declared her worthiness and Jesus gave her living water. No matter our gender, culture, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, or religion, you give us the truth, that we are one human race and we are loved. We ask for your blessing on these gifts we are sharing from the abundance you have given us. May they bring glory and honor to your name. Amen. Loving God, we pray for people who face discrimination because of race, religion, gender, orientation, or ethnicity. Open our eyes so that we learn to see each other differently, each one as precious as you. We pray for all those experiencing difficult times that they may find the strength, support, and love they need. We also pray for all those suffering from COVID, their caregivers, and anyone who has lost someone to this illness. God of mercy and peace, 
We pray for this world, marked by so much violence and conflict. So many places around the world are filled with anger, hatred, and greed. Keep our hearts and minds upon your open spirit, so we may remember to share your love as Jesus taught us, and help us to speak up for injustices. We pray for all people in our congregation, and those known to each of us who are in need of healing and support at this time. We also remember that there is hope in the world, and so we join together in this litany of thanksgiving. Litany of Thanksgiving. We are grateful for your uniqueness. Help us to stand, suspend judgment when things are, are not the same. We are grateful for individuality. Help us to engage change with grace. We are grateful for relationship. Help us learn to let go, to let go and learn to embrace. We are grateful for community. Help us learn from one another and create new ways of being together. We believe in a bright and amazing God who has been to the depths of despair on our behalf, who is ridden in splendor and majesty, who decorates the universe with sparkling water, clear white light, twinkling stars, and sharp colors over and over again. We believe that Jesus is the light of the world, that God believes in us and trusts us, even though we make the same mistakes over and over again. We commit ourselves to Jesus, to one another as brothers and sisters, and to the maker's business in the world. God let God said, let there be light. Amen. Commissioning. We are different parts of God's beautiful, diverse creation. May we all come to know God more deeply through God's beautiful, diverse creation in our daily lives. Beloved, be, beloved, realize who we are called to be. We are called by God to live in peace love and full and full participation in community together we are commissioned to live in community with one another and now, now let, let us go out into, into god's, god's world to enter, enter into, into the days of our new beginnings, beginnings with, with confidence with trust with hope and, and with joy for god is with us and within us this day and forevermore Salvação, we pray. 